What's up, everybody? I'm Jeremy. I'm Alice. We are going to Red River Gorge for a weekend backpacking trip. It's been a long time coming. We are so excited to get out. Thomas, how are you feeling? I'm pretty good. Yeah, it's been a long time, like you were saying, so it'll be fun. We are hype. We are on I-64 right now, heading to the Mountain Parkway, which is going to take us east towards Slate, Kentucky. So that's where we're headed. Exit 33 for Slade and Beattyville. I'm gonna make a couple stops before we head to the trail. I'm gonna hang a left up here. I'll just run down real fast and get I think they only have a three day. The pre hike meal. Probably a mistake. All right, so we've reached the Bison Way trailhead, which is my drop off location. I'm heading up right over there. Thomas is about to leave me behind. Yep. All right. All right, awesome. I'm heading out. All right, see you tomorrow, man. All right, so I am off, heading up the Bison Way Trail, right out of the gate, just right uphill. That's the parking lot back behind me. Pretty steep climb to start off with, so. So we just climbed up this. You're not ready. We're to a split. I'm guessing it's this way. Check the GPS. All right, I just left uh, Jeremy at the uh, Bison Trailhead and I'm gonna be on my way to mine. Uh I'm gonna get packed up and head on out. So I just saw a dog on the trail and it was big and fluffy and it's great. There's just something about seeing a dog on the trail, hiking along with a human. All right, so I reached a dungeon. So now I'm gonna be going all the way. I'm gonna be heading up there. And I know from experience, it's a lot of uphill. So Martin Fork is a great area and I could be videoing it like the whole time and end up not hiking to anywhere. So I might put this down for a bit, get some miles behind me, and I'll see you guys later. So my gimbal died, like not even a quarter mile in, and now I've got to carry it for no reason. But I'm not out here to make a video. I'm out here just to be in the woods and just have a good time, and no big deal. It's about six and a half miles for me to get to the spot where me and Thomas are gonna meet up tomorrow. And we're gonna to plan to meet around one. So I'm hoping to get maybe like two or three miles in tonight. Super, super chill, easy hike. That way I can meet him tomorrow there at noon and he won't think I'm dead. It's just really, really good to finally be out here. If you would have told me in December that the first time that I would get on the trail in 2020 would be June, I probably would have fallen to my knees and cried and thrown up all over the floor. Maybe not the last part, but you know, it's been a long time coming and I'm so glad to finally be out here. And the weather is just absolutely incredible. Right now, it's probably like in the mid 70s, little to no humidity. And tomorrow, I think the high is like 80 or like 78 or something. Same thing on Saturday and overnight low of like 59. Couldn't ask for better backpacking weather. I'm loving it. Coming up on another little creek crossing here. And up that way, let's keep rolling. So 
So I just made the unfortunate decision just to go ahead and bypass Indian staircase. I thought about it, but I think just with me being alone, it would be better not to take the risk. I'm not really worried about it. I've climbed sketchy things like that. Last spring I hiked Angel's Landing in Zion National Park. And if you aren't familiar with that, it's one of the most dangerous hikes in the country, actually, supposedly. There were spots where a foot to my left, there was a 1500 foot drop to the floor. <laughs> Climbed Lion's Head and Dolly Sods a few years ago in West Virginia. It's kind of a scramble, but both of those times I had Thomas with me. Even just a minor injury, I'd be by myself and in trouble. So we'll think about quad splitter. I think I got up the worst of that uh, rough trail after Martin's Fork. I mean, rough trail is absolutely named. I will say that. So in uh, that direction, if I kept going that way, you'd see this great big arch called Grace Arch. But I'll actually be going this way. And this will take me out to a uh, parking lot area. So I'll probably get out my uh, headlamp and all that. And I might be doing a little night hiking. But yeah, I'll, I'll start looking for a uh, campsite soon. So right now I'm doing the hiking that I really appreciate. That's nice, flat hiking. And I'm actually, I actually see the uh, parking lot for uh, Grey's Arch actually. So that means I am uh, once up close to my uh, destination. So yeah, uh, that once, now I'm gonna walk on a gravel road for a bit and take a put some tight trail and hopefully find a campsite for tonight. So yeah, that should be cool. Got a steep climb here. You can see up above some kind of cliff or ridge. Looks like we're gonna go right under. I'm assuming up there is the top of a neat staircase. So it may not be the Indian one, but I did find a staircase. Let's see what's up here. I think I hear some people up here. So I got to the top of the staircase. Look what we found. Not exactly sure which arch this is. I will drop a caption somewhere down here and tell you what it is. Here's a little peek through the trees. All right, so I just happened to check my GPS and realized that I went the wrong way. This is not the trail. Ouch. <laughs> this is not the trail that I want. I need to go back here to the little split off where I saw the people and go up that way. That's where the trail is. I have no idea what this is. All right, found something kind of cool right off the trail. Take a look behind me. Awesome. So I could be wrong, but going off what I was told, I think they were saying, that's Indian Staircase over there, where I would have come up, and then the trail goes around this way, and then comes out over here. I think that's what they were telling me. So yeah, it's getting dark enough now where it's like I need my hand up to help me see a little bit, as you can clearly see, but, so now I'm on a pinch and trait trail. There's something about hiking when it's getting dark because nighttime is approaching. And then like hiking at night, like there's like such an added was pleasure to it, like it's like you're conquering something almost. So I found this like good campsite went back, but I'm not sure if it's off the trail enough, so I'm just gonna hike a little bit more 
And if I don't find anything good enough, I'll probably go back to that one for the night. I'm back down, getting closer to the creek again. So I'm closing in on three miles, right at about two and three quarters. Um, I was hoping to get about three miles in tonight, and it is starting to get a little bit dark. So I'll probably be looking for something, a spot for the night here pretty soon. Just trying to push through and crush out this last 30 minutes of hiking or so. Hopefully we can find a campsite that's around three miles at least but not like right around the corner up here to where i have to question whether i want to go a little bit further or not so we'll keep on moving here's back into some rhododendron keep on trucking All right, so we're right about three miles. And right down here behind me, I think I see a workable campsite. I'm really tempted. I kind of want to keep going, just make a little bit more progress. Um, but it is getting dark. I don't want to be looking for a campsite in the dark. And I know this is the time of day where it, it goes from like dusk to night pretty quick. So I think let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, check this out. So the place that I saw is right over here and I got down to it and it wasn't quite as flat as it looked like. I think I see something a little further down. So I'm gonna go and check that out. Yeah, so I came down here. This is way better. Let's go with this. It's already got a little bench to sit on, a fire ring, and I don't know, I'll find a place to put the tent. This looks good, we made it. So in case you were wondering if hiking is good exercise, in an hour and a half, we've gone three miles. Oops. And we burned 770 calories, according to this. So, if you're wondering if hiking is good exercise, I'll let that be your answer. Even after hiking, only like three miles, you still can't understand until you feel it, how good it feels to drop your pack after hiking for a little while. It's awesome. I feel like a new man. So first thing that I'm going to do um, before setting up camp is I'm going to go ahead and get a little pile of leaves burning. That should help run off some of the bugs. Thankfully, they haven't been too bad so far. I've got all my gear sprayed down with, what is it called? Permethrin, like the anti-tick stuff. I don't know. Um, and I got some bug spray on. Um, only thing has been walking through a lot of spider webs, but that's just to be expected with summer hiking. So let's get it going. So just got little tiny blaze going, just some leaves to burn or to run the bugs off. This may end up being the closest thing to a campfire I had tonight. Okay, so when I was over here hanging out my food bag, I walked over this way and stepped on this and heard cracking and looked down and realized that I hit the jackpot on some firewood. This stuff is dry out, dried out and good to go. So I'm gonna break some of this up and I think I'm gonna go ahead and have a little fire here tonight because it's, it's dark outside, it's 10 o'clock, but I'm not tired at all. So give me something to do here for a little bit. After a little bit of effort, you got us a nice rolling fire. That is a beautiful sight. Even when it's not cold and you like want to stay warm and sit by this or cook food on it, like I will always love a good fire at nighttime out in the woods. I wonder how Thomas is doing right now. The campsite for the evening. Probably gonna eat up some snacks and get a fire started. This should be a good time. I mean, yeah, go to bed. Start again tomorrow. Small, small fire I've started so far. You know, it's not much, but it's something I did. 
probably enjoy this the rest of the night and then head to bed. Alright, I'm in my tent for the night. Um, I'm probably, you know, get all situated and then it's off to bed for me. See you tomorrow. Alright, well the fire's kind of burned down for the most part, so I'm getting a little bit tired, so I'm going to go ahead and kick out these embers, uh, clean up a few more things, and head out into the tent for the night. Right now it is 1045, so kind of early for me, but I'm going to go ahead and turn in for that. So I'm laying down in the tent, safe and sound. It's nice to get out of the bugs for sure. Um, it's a little bit stuffy in here, but I know it's going to cool down tonight, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm hoping and praying I don't have to pee in the middle of the night. Who knows what could happen with that. That's literally the worst thing ever when you're doing this. Um, and tent feels pretty good as far as like being level and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and turn in. Hope Thomas is good. Uh, thank you for watching so far. We'll check back in the morning. Good night, everybody. Morning everybody. It's about 6.15 right now. And uh, I'm just laying here. I don't think I'm going to go back to sleep. I don't really feel like getting up yet either. I slept fairly well for the most part of the night. And then around I think like 1 or 2. Um, I woke up and uh, it was kind of a battle to stay asleep after that. Um, just with, there's some whippoorwills that were being kind of loud, and, um, as you can see, my pad kind of slid down, because the tent's not exactly flat, and I would have had to probably get up and out of the tent to move it, so I've I'd, I'd just been kind of dealing with it, made it kind of, um, awkward, but not too bad, just not as much leg room as I'd like to have for someone my size, so. Anyway, I'll probably keep laying here a little while and get up and get some breakfast going here in a little bit. I didn't mention it, but this is actually also my debut trip for my new MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe. I uh, realized a minute ago that I never even tested this thing. Probably not the best decision, but if it's MSR, it's going to be quality. So it got the water boiling faster than I could get my food down. So I think that means it's going to be a pretty good product. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Breakfast today, we got, of course, coffee, uh, some pre-cooked bacon, along with an avocado I'm going to cut up and put on a tortilla, and then an RX bar for dessert. That's a good-looking avocado. This is looking real good. Not bad. It's amazing that in this tiny little bar, they can fit three egg whites, six almonds, four cashews, two dates, and no bowls.
All right, thought I'd show you a little of the campsite before I completely pack up. You can almost kind of see the trail, like right over there. And then, yeah. And then whoever was at this campsite last had some nice wood. So, being campfire sure was not the hardest. It's kind of remnants of it. This is kind of my aftermath of breakfast. I would brewed some coffee and I was like, well, it's still really hot. So I thought I'd start tearing down. Just finished eating breakfast. Um, I just kind of been sitting here, just relaxing, listening to the sounds of the forest for a little while. Gonna go ahead and start packing up. So it's gonna be a little under four miles from here to the meeting spot uh, where I'm gonna meet up with Thomas. And then from there, it'll be about another two or so miles to the area we're planning on camping tonight. So about six miles today, very, very, very easy day. Um, I think about 1500 feet of elevation or of ascent. Um, to put that into perspective, yesterday was about 600, so um, a little bit of climbing, but nothing too crazy. Um, that should get us out to where we're planning to camp tonight, um, well before the weekend crowds get here, because it is Friday night, or it is Friday, so we're hoping to get a good spot before too long, so... So I'm on the Pitchum Tight shirt right now. And the plan is to um, meet up with Jeremy at the intersection of uh, what should Tower Trace and the uh, Rough Chair will intersect. So that means I'm gonna hike out in the Pigeon Pipe for a little bit. Then I'm gonna get on what's called the Buck Trail. Then I'll hop on Cooper Ridge Trail. And then I'll head north and then uh, we'll eventually meet up there. My least favorite thing about summer hiking is not the heat or the humidity, especially on this trip because it's literally perfect outside. My least favorite thing about summer hiking is the bugs, specifically the, specifically the spider webs. <coughs> Basically constantly walking through them at all times, trying to use my trekking poles out in front of me to knock them down but they're still just all up in my face, dang. I just hit one mile. Well, the trail has been awesome so far. Other than the spider webs, it's just been flat and just a really peaceful forest morning. Just the birds are chirping. The sun's like shining through the trees. Perfect temperature, it's probably 65 maybe. Couldn't ask for better weather besides the spider webs. I'm really ahead of schedule right now. I left the campsite about nine o'clock. That'll give me plenty of time to stop and smell the roses a little bit and just slow down and enjoy this. I do need to stop and load up on water at some point. All right, as you can see, I am uh, to the direction of Buck Trail. So yeah, I got about a mile and a half until I get to Kuma Ridge Trail. And then after that, I'll be heading north and then hopefully I'll meet up with Jeremy. All right, let's get, let's get hiking. So on the book trail, I kind of just been going down, and now I'm like, I'm ne I'm in the valley, I'm near water, because I'm here at Rush, and it's so it's a bit cooler, which is kind of nice because it's starting to heat up. But I know I'll eventually have to go up, so I won't get I won't get my you know get used to it too long. 
and I've never actually been on this trail, so it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, see how fast a mile and a half goes. Alright, so I got to the river, or stream, right, or at the bottom of Oak Trail. Now I'm heading up, and then I'll eventually hit Kuma Ridge Trail. So, whew, that was the uphill from it. It's been kind of killer. So I got off the buck trail, and I'm on the uh, Kuma Ridge Trail, up to the rough trail. And that's uh, where I'm going to be meeting up with Jeremy, and then uh, together we'll go to Hanston Point, and then, you know, we hopefully should find some water along the way, at least from the videos that I watch, and hopefully there's a, some water source. I do know at some point we're going to cross the road, and then eventually the river. I can hear cars out this way. It sounds like it might be getting pretty close to there. Uh, we're gonna cross the road and then we'll eventually hit the famous uh, footbridge, the suspension bridge. And I've never seen that before. So I'm really looking forward to that. Looks like the trail is finally going to start going up, um, so that's okay. We walked a whole mile and a quarter basically on flat ground, so we'll hit it. We are now on Shell Towie Trace. You can see the white turtle on the tree. Probably a pretty cool view up there. Wow. Check this out. I sadly do not know what this is, <laughs> or what it's called, I mean. Awesome. So we're heading down this way. You can see this awesome rock wall just behind me. Pretty cool. I found a big rock to sit on for a few minutes. Just kind of chill and take it in. Awesome. I love that I've got like so much time to just stop and check things out like that. We basically came around, this is tricky, this way. And then went up to the big rock thing and around. Now we're coming down through here. There's a little perspective on how tall it is. You probably can't see it through the trees, but that's a, a ridge way up there. So that's probably where Cloud Splitter is, I'm guessing. I bet the view up there is awesome. It's way up there. We have reached the road. We were up there and I saw this spot down here. It looked like a nice little spot to just uh, come down and drop the pack and just sit by the water for a little bit. So I'm gonna get my boots off, 
maybe have a little snack and uh, just sit here for a little bit. I got some time to kill and I'd rather burn it here than up at the meeting spot with nothing to do for an hour. So this is absolutely beautiful. After hiking any distance, ooh, there's no greater feeling. So I just took a little dip in the water and it felt absolutely incredible. I didn't like it all the way down in. I just kind of splashed it up in my chest and my back and my legs and stuff. And I saw a little crawl dad and I was like, ooh. So I hopped out of the water, but that's so refreshing. I'm gonna dry off and get my shirt back on before someone sees my my dog dad bod. All right, so I made it to uh, bottom of the bottom of the valley again, taking Kuma Ridge Trail. Um, it's really nice. It's really peaceful. Um, there were some people back there. I don't know doing some stuff. I don't know cleaning it, testing it. I'm not sure. But yeah, now I'm down here by the water again, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I sadly couldn't record uh, a buck trail when I got to water because I was being trailed by some um, Boy Scouts. So, you know, wanted to get ahead of them. So that's why you'll, you'll probably only see uh, <sighs> two times where I've done water. I just got off of Kuma Ridge and now I'm on the rough trail, which I think it's just Kuma Ridge turns into a rough trail once it intersects with, I think, Wildcat. That was this back there. I just passed that. But now I'm going to meet up with Jeremy. But yeah, this uh, last, I don't know, a few hundred, hundred feet of this hike has been a lot like Martin Fork in the beginning where you're just kind of walking by the water super peaceful because all you, you can hear all the water and it's really cool and but yeah let's hopefully meet up with Jamison all right guys I'm just hiking along and I came across this big old this might be a baby magnolia Cause I know their leaves get pretty big, but look at the size of this one leaf. And look, a little, look at that tiny long leg hanging out there too. <sighs> this hike today has been up and down for me, which I think I've said this multiple times already. But it's like, gone up, kind of got some, seen some of the cliffs, then you know, got down. So I got to see plenty of water today, which is really nice. And then by the end of the day, we should, I should get to see a really nice sight up top, so, you know, more up it's going to be for me. So, and then, you know, I get to spend it with Jeremy, so that's always a good time. You know, he's one of my best friends. So, it's always a good time hiking with him. So, it'll be good to meet up with him soon. Made it to a meetup spot. I haven't seen Jeremy yet. So, I'll probably just get to chill out for a little bit. I'll wait for him, and then... You know, so he should be coming from that way. I just came from that way. And then once we meet up, we're gonna go that way. All right, I just got my, my boots back on. I'm all dried off. So we're gonna head back up and go across the bridge. And then I believe the trail is gonna go around this way and follow the river for a little bit. Back on the bridge again. You can see right down there, that rock right there in the middle of the screen. That's where we were at just a minute ago. Let's keep on rolling. Hopefully the quarantine hasn't been bad enough on my body to where I bring this thing down, hopefully.
a little ways down the trail from the bridge now and found this massive like swimming hole. I really wish I would have waited until I got up here to take my break. I'd have gone all the way in. I think there's some people up here kayaking, it sounds like. This is really cool. I don't know how deep the water is, but if, the, if it is pretty deep, that'd be some good like cliff jumping right there. But I don't know how deep it is. Tons of areas to swim. There's a bunch of people down there hanging out, being really loud. Finally starting to ascend away from the water a little bit here. All right, I found a pretty good spot to filter some water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. Absolutely love this filter. So you pick up dirty water with this. There's actually a bug in there, <laughs> multiple bugs. Then when you open up this valve down here, it starts the water flowing, filters through this and goes down into your uh, receiving compartment, whatever you wanna call it. It takes literally no effort. Sure, it's a little bulky, maybe a little heavier than some of the lighter stuff, but this is just so effortless. I don't have to pump anything. I don't have to squeeze out of a little bag. It does it all for me and takes very little time. Good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit overboard in the water filtration. Um, it's gonna suck to pack it because water is really heavy, but where we're going tonight will be nowhere near water. So I'd rather have more than enough and just embrace the suck and uh, just, just carry it, it'll be all right. Got about, is 11.42, so I mean, it's a little over 15 minutes until the planned meetup time. I still got a little ways to go, not too long, I don't think. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna be climbing at all, but um, I'm probably gonna, once this water is done filtering, probably pick up the pace and just push it all the way up to the meetup spot and hopefully see Thomas. I'll load it up. My pack is quite a bit heavier, but that's okay, because I've got a ton of water. So now I have 13 minutes to get to the meeting location, which is still a good bit away. So probably need to pick up the pace a little bit. All right, so I just heard from some other hikers that uh, were passing that um, they probably saw Jeremy. They were, he was probably 10, 15 minutes behind them. Uh, apparently he was gonna stop for water which is unfortunate because I have a crap ton of water for him, so already, but that's, that's okay. Like, that's that's a good problem if you can waste water. Oh. Smart. Awesome, so sweet. Right Look who I found. Hey. <laughs> Hello, my brother. Hello. We're reunited and grabbing some lunch. This is absolutely beautiful. We've been reunited, we've been rehydrated, and we've been renourished. And now we're gonna continue on together. Got some fairly steep climbing, making our way away from the water now. This has been pretty treacherous, yeah. not that you can tell. But I think we're getting close to the top. We're going up here, so. I can't speak for Thomas, but this has been the hardest of my hike so far. So, we are through the worst 
done that. Jeremy, how was it? Yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up. I think we've made it kind of to the top. Yeah, I mean. Since we stopped for lunch, we've climbed about 460 feet. That's why we haven't been filming very much. Beautiful. So we've reached the top, kind of. Um, so now we are picking up the rough trail, which we've kind of been on, but it's like the Cheltele Trace. So normally when I've been out to where we're going, I've come down this way up here, which is the Pinch and Tight Trail, and then gone down this way. We're gonna go this way, and then we're gonna break off the trail here in a little bit, right up there. We could probably do this hike with our eyes closed, so we'll be okay. True. <laughs> So we've come along the rough trail and now we're gonna hop on this hidden trail right here and go through some thicket for about a mile and we'll be there. This is the first of many clearings along this trail. Somebody built a, I don't know, it's a great little campsite but we're going a little further out. working our way through this thicket jungle we have arrived this is not actually where we are planning to camp but there's a ton of people over there so you won't be able to see them so we're gonna stick with this I'm gonna get this water off my back oh baby Woo. how do you feel Light. <laughs> wow. Hey, little buddy. <laughs> All right, so we're just resting up. Probably going to set up camp here in a little bit. Right. Um, I have hiked about eight miles today, a little, little over eight miles, and I think like about 600 feet of elevation gain. Thomas, what do you got? Uh, I've done. I've done probably approximately the same amount of hiking, but I've probably climbed up and down a lot more this whole trip. I had 53 floors climbed. Thomas had 77. 77, so all that flat ground earlier for me, Thomas wasn't so lucky. So we're just hanging out, probably going to start setting up here a minute. Got Camp Kelty over here. I think there's a Thomas on that. Oh, there's a Thomas. Hey, little buddy. All right, we're just lazing around. You can see Jeremy here in his tent. This is how you camp. Get to your campsite at three in the afternoon or whatever time we got here. Then lay around the rest of the day. Right. That's what you do. All right, you heard it here, folks. This is what you do for camping. I'm just laying in my tent and I am A-OK -okay with it. We have nothing to do the rest of the day other than hike out to Hanson's Point for the sunset. There's some people over there that are being really freaking loud. You can probably hear them. Why even come out here if you're just going to scream the whole time? Taking right, a little walk. Tent. There's a lot of tents. Look at all these tents. I'm really glad we're not staying over here. These are the people that are being really loud. Like a oh. They're big. Mm -hmm. He's going to just go in your boot. <laughs> Oh, he's on your boot. He's on my boot. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, 
What's he doing? That's so funny. Like, what's he doing? He's like, what is this? He's like down on his belly too, which is funny. We've been here just kind of chilling, laying and sitting around for probably, what, four hours now? Yeah. Haven't done a single thing. It's been wonderful. It's about 6.30 right now, and we decided to go ahead and get some dinner rolling. Tonight's dinner, for me at least, is Italian style, oh, it's backwards, Italian style pepper steak. So, sounds good. We'll, we'll see what happens. What you got, Tom? I got a lasagna. Lasagna. So we'll see how it turns out. Oh, yeah. We just finished eating dinner, kind of cleaning up and just chilling a little bit. We're gonna head down to Hanson's Point for a nice sunset view. Welcome to Hanson's Point. How are you feeling, Tom? I'm pretty good. You look comfy? I am comfy. So, I came from, if you see Chimney Rock right there, way on the other side of that, out over here somewhere, hiked up all along through here, around over this way came up over there somewhere around the other side. Thomas started way over there somewhere and hiked, I don't know, somewhere over here. And we met up over there somewhere and came all the way up. I think that's how it worked. I just know that I came from way over there by this, whatever that is. Right. Looking at the trail, it looks like I hiked under it. So I'm heading back up to the campsite. Thomas stayed for a little bit longer. Um, I'm heading back because I got a call from nature. So I said, hey, Tom, did you check for Widowmakers? And he said, yeah. And I was like, what about this tree leaning directly over your tent? <laughs> directly over his tent. So I think Thomas might be moving somewhere else. Did you figure out where you're gonna go yet? Honestly, I think right here. Nice. Because it's relatively bad. Back at Camp Kelty, there's a nice little fire here. Life is not bad. We've been here since about two this afternoon and these people have not stopped the entire time we've been here. And we can't even call a campground office and complain because we're in the back country. Don't come out here and be this inconsiderate. Also, there's like 20 other people camping up here. So they're not, they're not only bothering us all the way over here, there's people that are like way closer than we are. And they're just carelessly screaming at 10.30 at night.
Good morning, everybody. That was one of the best nights of sleep that I've ever got out in the woods until uh, a whippoorwill started screaming at 5.30, but I'd already had plenty of sleep at that point anyway, so it wasn't that big of a deal. How'd you sleep, Tom? Pretty good. That's it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> a wise man named Brian once said, that'll warm me up. Hmm, that first sit feeling. Here's to you, Brian. <laughs> All right, so you know, we're up this morning, so we're gonna, we're having some breakfast. I'm having some maple and brown sugar and apple and cinnamon and oatmeal. I'm gonna have this Cliff Coffee Clutch and Bar Caramel Macchiato. Jeremy, what are you having? What did, what did you have? I'm about to have a Coconut Chocolate RX Bar. Nice. I feel like the lighting on me is really good right now because it's just like it. Mm -hmm. And Kodiak Cakes Caramel Oatmeal. Nice. Unleashed. You're having some coffee, right? And some coffee. All right, man. Of course. Right. It should be a good morning. We're good. So Thomas brought this stuff called Pyro Putty. I guess it's like a fire starter thing. So we're gonna give it a little test. Just build a small little fire. And get it out. So to break it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I can feel a little bit of heat on here from last night, actually. Yeah. So, all right, let's see what happens. There we go. So it is right at 9 a.m. We are heading back from Hanson's Point. We changed up our plan a little bit. We're gonna go, we're gonna take the Pincham Tight Trail out and then the rough trail back down to Martin's Fork to Thomas's car.
easy by this point on the trip, on the morning that you're hiking out, I'm ready to get back to the car and get my pack off and get in some air conditioning or heat and go home and take a shower, eat a nice hot meal. And that all sounds great, I'm not gonna lie. But to be honest, this trip has been so great. Kind of sad that it's coming to a close. I'm really glad that we're on our way out right now as we are just passing group after group after group of people with packs on. So as bad as it was last night, it's probably gonna be way worse tonight. So I'm glad that we're on our way out. So we've come up here before and repelled off this ledge with my uncle. Shout out to Eric if he's watching. And now there's a big old tree down right over it. Hopefully they get this taken down soon. We just reached into the Pinch and Tide Trail. Yeah. Normally we would be parked up there, <laughs> but we're gonna head down this way and pick up our trail that's gonna take us back down to the car. You and me, all of the people. <laughs> coming up on the Gray's Arch parking lot. It's 10 a.m. and it's already packed to the brim. Really glad we're getting out of here. So this is the trailhead for Gray's Arch. We're gonna go down just a little ways and then break off on our trail and get away from all these people. Yeah, and I've already done all this, so this is just a repeat for me. So. But it should be a good time. Yeah, we're doubling back what Thomas did now, so. All right, so we're at the junction. This is the trail that goes down to Gray's Arch. And this is the rough trail. It's gonna take us back to Martin's Fork. We're going this way. Trails open it up just a bit, and it's all downhill from here. I believe we're going that way. Yes. Let's do it. making the descent down into the Martins Fork area. <laughs> We've reached the bottom. Now it's gonna be three quarters of a mile smooth hike through one of the most beautiful areas of Red River Gorge, Martins Fork. There's just streams and bridges everywhere. We have reached the road, and the car is over there somewhere. We are 
in the car and the air conditioning. My route finished me right at about 15 miles on the dot. Thomas, what did you end up with? We are now headed to the glorious and well-deserved post hike meal. Post hike meal, phase one. We deserve this. We got fries, we got chips, we got water. It's a good day. We made that disappear real quick. Red River Rock House. Do it, do it, do it. If you aren't feeling pizza, get over here, have a burger, a burrito, you name it. What's up everybody? Thanks for joining us on this adventure. If you like the video, make sure to like it, share it, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Is that a fart? No, it wasn't.